your support, and we thank you for it. We appreciate the support of Christians around the world. Jews, Christians, so many others can agree on one thing. Israel is a miracle. A state in the heart of the Middle East that has known democracy, pure democracy and liberty, every day of its 70 year history. A pluralistic, open society, a democracy where diversity is celebrated, not feared. Christians also know another fundamental truth. Jerusalem has been the capital of the Jewish people for 3,000 years. Jerusalem has been the capital of Israel for 70 years, and Jerusalem will always be our capital. Thank you, President Trump, and thank our many, many Christian friends around the world for recognizing this basic truth. Ladies and gentlemen, Israel is, the, is also the only country for thousands of miles, where Christians not only survive, they thrive. Christian holy sites are protected, and Christian worship is done without fear. Christians have achieved incredible heights in Israel. We have an Arab Christian who served on our Supreme Court for 15 years. We have others, diplomats, business people, university professors, doctors, everything. They're in every field. Many, many examples of Christians who contribute greatly to Israeli society and share in the great miracle of Israel's success. Sadly, some countries don't respect Christians. In Iran, Christians are brutally persecuted. Christian pastors have spent years in prison now this is an issue which I believe should concern everyone. And let me say clearly, Israel stands in complete solidarity with persecuted Christians in Iran. And I ask, why are so many people silent as Christians are jailed and tortured in Iran? Well, I can say this, we in Israel will not be silent. And I will continue to raise the plight of the long-suffering Iranian people, Christians, Baha'is, students, journalists. Iran's regime is a point of darkness in the Middle East. Israel is a point of light. The great news is that Israel has never been stronger. Nations from around the world are flocking to Israel. They seek our ingenuity. They seek our technology. They seek our intelligence in both senses of the word. Israel still faces many threats. On our southern border, the fanatic terrorist group Hamas calls for genocide of Jews. In the north, Hezbollah has stockpiled massive numbers of missiles aimed at Israel. And Iran, well, Iran openly calls for Israel's annihilation. But Israel is strong. We will not let thugs and tyrants bully us. We will always defend ourselves. We will prosper, we will thrive. And Israel's strength is not merely because of our army, it's because of our spirit, and it's because of the spirit of friends like you around the world. Thank you for always standing with Israel. You are truly among our greatest friends in the world. I cherish that friendship, and I cherish your solidarity. Thank you for standing with Israel. Thank you for standing with the truth. Thank you all. Amen. Thank you, Prime Minister Netanyahu. We've just heard from two strong leaders in this hour that we are living in who are not afraid to do what is right. And I'm grateful for that. Christians United for Israel is an organization with 4.2, over 4.2 million members. And we have a place in the lobby if you would like to uh, get more information or sign up to become a member. It's very easy, but uh, the heart of it is, is that we want to show our support to the Jewish people, to Israel and to the Jewish people. During the World War II, there were those who uh, were, were people who helped others 
and help particularly the Jews. And then there were those who were uh, silent, as Prime Minister Netanyahu spoke of just recently uh, on that video. But I think about what we stand for is the, state, is the fact that we want to stand with the Jewish people and stand for Israel and let them know that we will not be silent in the, in the days ahead as well. Amen? Tonight, we are a group of people from various churches, and we welcome you here tonight. And I welcome you to uh, become a part of this. This Night to Honor Israel is an event that we've done for the past several years. Since the beginning of Kufi, uh, we, we, we came together with Pastor John Hagee, who is the founder of Kufi, Christian Jai for Israel, in 2006. Leaders from all denominations and groups came together, and he shared, we all say we support Israel, but how is that in our actions? What are we doing to show that? And we want to help you to be able to do that, not only with our humanitarian aid, but every year we meet in Washington, D.C., as many Christians as want to come. And we go to the 50 state senators and congressmen, and we give them certain talking points, three, that we are asking them to uh, vote for in legislation that's proud at, at that moment in legislation that will be supportive to the nation of Israel. And we've seen God use that day that we go and we, we converge upon in Washington, D.C. And so uh, being a part of that has been a, a, a unique experience. We also hear from military strategists and Middle East correspondents, as well as senators and congressmen who understand the importance of that little nation. Israel can fit eight and a half times in the state of Oklahoma. That's how small it is. And yet, it's, it's a nation that's in the news all the time. Uh, because the Bible prophesies of that nation and what will continue to happen as the days, uh, last days that we're living in are approaching. I've thought about how Genesis chapter 13, verse uh, 14 and 15, when God spoke to Abram and he told him, he said, look north, south, east, and west, Abram, because I'm going to give you all this land. And he added a little word, forever. How long is forever? It's Forever. And even though the Jewish people uh, were conquered many times by various groups like the Babylonians or the Medo-Persians or the Greeks or Romans, when the Romans conquered, uh, they did not like the, the name Israel. They wanted to, they didn't like the Jewish people, and so they changed the name to Palestine. And that was uh, back in 70 AD. And so the land was known as Palestine for many years, and a lot of people think that that's that's just, uh, it was all the Palestinian people. Actually, it was Arabs and Jews and, uh, together, living together. And, and all of them were considered Palestinian people at that time. And of course, the Ottomans took over. And then uh, when the British, uh, during World War I, when the British gained uh, that, that land, they made an agreement, a Balfour Agreement in 1917 that uh, they would be there long enough until uh, the day would come when they would leave and allow for a restoration of the national home for the Jewish people. And that happened in 1948. And in 1948, there was a president of the United States that uh, at that time, he was not necessarily convinced biblically uh, on that, but he passed away. And another, uh, his vice president stepped forward, Vice President Truman, and Truman, the first thing he did was he recognized Israel as the nation, as a nation. And, uh, and so the United States has always been a nation that has been for Israel ever since. Because of that, we understand that there's a blessing from the scripture that says those that bless Israel will be blessed, those that curse her will be cursed. That word curse has the meaning of despise, reject, and ignore. But we as Christians United for Israel have decided we're not going to ignore, we're not going to despise, we're not going to reject. We are going to show our support, and that's why you're here tonight, to celebrate with us in this beautiful presentation. This has been a tremendous uh, presentation of our choir and the orchestra from various churches. Thank you all. Thank you so much. It's beautiful. And one of the songs I wanted to share with you tonight, uh, if that's okay, was written by a Jewish immigrant. And uh, Irving Berlin came with his family, immigrated here to the United States in 1892. 
And Irving Berlin was a, a musician, and in World War II, uh, he didn't go to war, but uh, he wrote a song. It didn't get published, though, until Second War, World War. And, um, and during the Second World War, the song was published. It became a favorite song of America uh, from that time on. But it was a prayer, and his prayer was that uh, the U.S. would be able to triumph over Hitler and that there would come an end to the Nazi cruelty and the annihilation of the Jewish people. Our prayer still today is that our nation would bless Israel and that he would help us and Israel together as we stand for right and for justice in the earth and that no terrorism, no evil, no, no person, no nation would be able to destroy America or Israel or any nation again. Where the storm clouds gather Far across the sea Let us pledge allegiance To a land that's still free Let us all be grateful Oh, my God. 